Hello everybody, I'm talking today about causal loop diagramming in WinSim models according to system dynamics. Causal loop diagrams are called that because each link has a causal interpretation. Narrow going from A to B indicates that A causes B. And causal loop diagrams can be very helpful in conceptualizing and communication structures. Many people find causal loop diagramming to be very helpful even when no simulation model is created, while others feel they can be harmful if done in isolation. This video will be uh, primarily technical to show what is possible, how to increase, decrease, move, uh, change the shape and so forth, so it is also very helpful to everyone that is not going to create causal loop diagramming but would like to know a little bit technical details about the WinSim. So first of all just as a reminder we have here different symbols this one is to lock the sketch so you cannot move or change anything anymore this is the move button this hand then we have the auxiliary variable button that we are going to use here in causal loop diagramming. This is the box variable button that we don't use. This is more when you have the box, uh, the flow and stock uh, modeling. This is the normal arrow that we will use in causal loop diagramming. And this one is the flow or rate button that we don't need right now. So the causal loop diagram that we are going to create na right now is describing the competing feedback loops in a project. The causal loop shows the relationship between the amount of work to do, overtime hours required and the effect of overtime on both the amount of work done and also fatigue. So when you want to start, we first have to go to file, open a model, uh, not open a model, but new model. And then we come to, um, to this model settings, use catch. And we just take the default values because we don't need anything further. And we click OK. I click cancel that it's, uh, it's already gone. So let's make new model once again. And then I just want to add causal loop diagram that we are going to keep the title. Those steps that I'm now doing very fast, we are going to see now more in detail. This is part of it. Okay, first when we start building up the model, we click on variable because we want to insert first the variables. We say work to do. We take another one, work done. Then overtime hours required. Fatigue. Quality of work. And what we see now, I make a mistake here with work done, but I can or how can I change it? I just keep the variable button clicked, I click again on it, I change, and then the variable has its right name. So the ne next thing that we want to do is when we moved those variables around and we ordered it right in the correct way we want to add our arrows we grab press the button here arrow button then we go to the first variable we see the arrow head here we go to the second one then we already have our first um, arrow then we just fulfill whatever we have when we want to make the arrows a little bit curved we can do that like this we go somewhere in the no land we click and then we go to the work to do and we see that we have a curved arrow. We can do that also later on with just grabbing this little white circle and then we move it as we want to have it. Like this. 
So when we are not really happy with our variables, we always have the uh, possibility to delete them. Here's this little Pac-Man head where it's written delete. We go to the variable, we click on it, and then it's just gone. When we want to bring it back, we can do that either with adding the variable again and the arrow or we go to edit and make it undo then it's back again we can also delete single arrows just by clicking on it and then we can redo that and have again this arrow maybe we are performing sometimes or putting sometimes an arrow that we don't really want to have and then we just delete it like this what is always important is, and we shouldn't forget it, just to save the model, the call or the causal loop right now. We go to File, Save As, and then we save it wherever we want to have it saved. Now we are coming a little bit closer to really make changes. What we have to know first is how to select variables. We just go to the hand, we click it, we click the variable that we want. When you want to have more than one variable, we click the shift button on the keyboard and we click there again. Maybe this we want to include as well and over time. We can do it also just with the left mouse button. When we go over those two variables, we are choosing this. We can also go to edit and say select all. That's the same as we're just grabbing everything inside. So when we want to align the variables really nicely, we can click them. So select two of them. We want to have them straight above each other. We go to layout and say center on last and then they are really straight. Maybe we want to have fatigue and overtime on the same horizontal line. We go here vertical and then we just get it like that. And maybe call it in fatigue that they are right aligned, we click there and then they are really here on the right line. Now when we are not really happy with the size of the writings, the variables, we want to change that. Maybe work to do is the most important, we want to have this bigger. We click on it, we make a right mouse click and then we can change whatever we want, the size, we can make it bold and italic, we can change the color to red, we can take instead of Times New Roman, we can take Arial, we can make a box around it, we can also change the word position and so forth. And then just OK, and we see now that this changed. The font is now too big for our box, we just have to increase the box that we can read it nicely. When you want to align it again to overtime hours required, you press layout enter to last and then we have it as we had it before. Now the same we can do with the arrows. When you don't like the arrows we can click on the arrow head and make a right mouse click. We can either change the color of it, maybe let, let's keep it blue, we change afterwards. We can say that the arrow should be a little bit thicker. We can add a plus that we know it's a positive influence a positive cause and then OK and we see that we now got a plus here and the arrow is thicker we make that with the others as well so oops we have to go to the arrowhead that's the best and easiest way here it's a minus instead of a plus because it's a negative in influence when people are more fatigued the quality of work is decreasing so a minus here then the last here like this now the other way around maybe we want to have this now red and we have here still a plus we want also to have it a little bit thicker but maybe not that thick then we see that the plus is not did not change to to red so we have to go to font color red OK, and now I hope it's red again, exactly. Then also here we go to plus, uh, we have to make a, a minus here because it's a negative. When work is done, then the work to do is decreased. And also we change the color to red here. OK, OK, and now we have the minus here as well. 
Now maybe we want also to add a title here on top. How can we do that? We just can write it here. But the distance here is too small, so we first have to grab our causal loop diagram. We select all of it, we put it down, then here's this com comment button, sketch comment. We click here and here in the comer comment um, line we can add our comment, maybe I want to say work to do project model. We can also change now the size. We can choose the color, maybe we take blue, we can change it to Arial, bald, italic, we can underline it. Um, whatever you want to do, you can do like this. And we see that it's now on two lines, we want to have it on one line, so we have to make this box bigger. And we have now our title. There, additionally, we can insert here a symbol that we see that this is a positive feedback and this is a negative loop. We click here in the middle, we get the same uh, menu, but now we go to graphics down here, image, because it's a positive loop, we take the plus here. We make also a circle around it in the clockwise fashion. We change the color to blue because our loop is blue. And what we see is that we have now this little nice symbol in the middle. We make the same thing for the for the other loop. We just go and change that to a minus. We change the color to red. And we make the loop around it in the other way. And now that's what we get. So finally we have a nice cost loop that maybe we are convinced about it. When we want to add more variables, this is very easy, we just click here on variable, we add more variables and connect them with arrows as much as we want and this, it is necessary. What is maybe important to show to you is when you go to file, you can also print this causal loop that you have it on paper. What I normally do and prefer is I mark everything and I click Ctrl C and I copy it then to Word or to PowerPoint or to a, a design program where I can further improve the view or import it to some other place. I think this is all right now on this video. I hope you enjoyed and learned, learned something. Let's see us in the next video. Bye for now.